And Lord, we believe that there is something that you want to do tonight. There's something special that you want to do tonight. You don't make mistakes. We know that everybody in this room is in this room because you ordained it to be so. So whatever it is that you have for each one here tonight, God, let them receive just that. We pray, oh God, for open hearts tonight. We pray for open ears. Open eyes to see tonight. Let us be sensitive, oh God, to your Holy Spirit because you're always speaking to us. We pray, oh God, that you would have your way in this house tonight. We say your will be done, God. We say your kingdom come tonight. Lord, we lay our agendas and our plans aside, oh God, for your will for your glory, for your purpose. As you move over the earth, as you move in this room tonight, let us all be changed. Let us all be changed. Let us all be changed tonight. Let us not leave here tonight the same. Let us leave full, full of your spirit, full of your presence. We pray for new mantles, God, new mandates, new revelation, a new sound. Release the sound tonight. Release the prophetic sound, God. Release the prophetic sound. Release the prophetic sound. Release the prophetic sound. Release the sound tonight, mighty God. Your will be done in this house tonight. Your will be done in this house tonight. Your will be done in this house tonight. Holy Spirit, begin to move all over this room. Let your presence fill this place. Let your presence fill this place. What do you have need of tonight? Mighty God, your hand is not short. Most of us know that our God is on the move right now. In the earth, in this moment. Let us not miss this moment. I challenge you to reach out for God. Contend for your promise. We contend, oh God, we contend. We contend tonight for your glory. We contend for the promises. We contend for the prophetic words that have been released. And we say, have your divine way with each of us, mighty God. We surrender to you tonight. We surrender our will for yours tonight. And we reach out for more of you. We reach out for your glory. We reach out for your purpose in the earth. The earth is groaning. The earth cries out for you. The earth cries out for you. The earth cries out for the coming king. The earth cries out for the coming king. The earth cries out. Oh God, in these last days, I pray, oh God, that you would strengthen us. That you would give us a resolve, mighty God. That you would cause us to stand on the firm foundation. For you are the chief cornerstone. You are the solid rock on which we stand. And all other ground, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. So mighty God, fortify our faith tonight. Fortify our faith. Fortify our faith. Fortify our resolve to serve you. Fortify our resolve to live for you. Fortify our resolve to run after you tonight. We run after you tonight. We run after you tonight. We say, have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Mighty God, we fix our eyes on you. We fix our eyes on you tonight. You're all that matters. He 
He's all that matters. He's all that matters. God, you're all that matters tonight. You're all that matters. Arise and shine. Arise and shine. For your light has come. Your light has come. Your light has come. God, we thank you for this moment in time. This moment in time. And we come with expectation, God, because you do not disappoint. There are great things that you want to do in the earth. There's great things you want to do in this house. There's great things that you want to do with each individual in this house. And he's calling you tonight. He's calling you tonight. And he's calling you tonight to come closer, come closer, come closer, come closer, come closer, closer to his feet. He has something for you. He has something for you tonight. He has something for each of you tonight. Because you don't make mistakes. He doesn't make mistakes, God. Release the sound, God. Release the roar. Release the mantles. Release your word, mighty God. Let your glory fill this place. Rain down on us tonight. Give us a testimony tonight. Surprise us tonight. And we will not fail to give you the glory. We will not fail to give you thanks. Because he's good. Because you're good, God. Let faith arise. Let faith arise. Let faith arise, let faith arise, let hope arise, let hope arise, let hope arise in the house, let hope arise, let praise arise, why don't you stand to your feet, let praise arise in the house, let praise arise in this house. Let praise arise in this house. Let worship arise in your 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 house. Let joy arise. Let joy arise. Let joy arise. Let joy. Let peace arise in the house. Let peace arise. Let peace arise. Let your glory fill this place. Let your glory fill this place. Let your glory fill this place. Let your glory fill this place, God. Let your glory fill this place. Let your glory fill this place. Let your glory fill this place. Let your glory, hallelujah. Let your glory fill this place. Let your glory, let your glory, God. We want more, we want more of you. We want more of you. There's a shaking.
praise fill this room, mighty God. We are here to give you the glory and the praise, the honor tonight. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Let's praise the Lord, everyone. All right. All right. We're about to praise God in this place. Ready? Let everything, let everything that has breath, that has breath, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Lord. Let everything, let everything that has breath, that has breath, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let everything, let everything that has breath, that has breath, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let everything, let everything.
like there's nobody listening for you. I'll dance like there's nobody watching for you. I'll worship to my last breath. Give my all till there's nothing left. My focus is you. And I'll worship, I'll worship with my last breath. Give my all till there's nothing left. My focus is you.
will manifest himself Ooh. will manifest himself Rafa will manifest will manifest himself come on let's sing it again say Yahweh Yahweh Whoa. himself Jesus manifest yourself Rafa manifest your power in this place in this place Yahweh manifest Have your way in this 
this place we're ready for more we're ready we're ready for more we're ready oh god move in this place oh god have your way yes we're ready for more we're ready for more we're ready for more we're ready for more heavenly father move in have your way feet for where you stand this very night is holy ground says your God for know that it is the time for the lion to roar it is the time for the sounding of the trumpet says your God for know that I am moving and I am raising up even a Joshua generation in this day and in this hour and know that even as I raise up this Joshua generation know that you shall go in says your God know that you shall even go in further you shall go in deeper you shall take territory says your God for know and understand that I'm raising up even a generation that will look at the giants and say to the giants bow low for I'm raising up a generation that will speak to the strongholds and say to the strongholds come down and even as you speak to those giants and can command them to bow low you speak to those giant strongholds and command them to come down know that they shall even obey the word that I shall put in your mouth says your God so know that I'm standing in your midst this evening as the captain of the Lord of hosts and I'm saying get on my side get on my side get on my side this night says your God for no raising up a Joshua generation for it is time says your God to go in and to possess your land well move in this place have your way we're ready for more we're ready for more we're ready we're ready for more say move in
Somebody praise God with me. Where are the worshipers in this house? Where are the intercessors in this house? We're ready for more. Whatever is trying to hold you back from receiving your breakthrough tonight. I hear God say, it's coming down. God said, it's coming down. There's some mega strongholds that have been gripping your life. But the Spirit of God says, it's coming down. Oh, oh, oh God, we praise you. I need you to step out of your seat. Do something you don't usually do. Come out of your comfort zone. And I want you to begin to open your mouth. And I want you to raise a sound in this room I need somebody to cry out to Jesus you know what you need you know what you need God to do you've been earnestly praying you've been earnestly fasting you've been earnestly seeking God deliver me somebody cry out for their freedom cry out for your deliverance cry out for your breakthrough for the spirit of God is here to tear down every stronghold barrier that is against you. The power of God is here to shift your life, to shift your mindset, to shift. Oh, yes, I feel God in this place. It's shifting, it's shifting, it's shifting, it's shifting in your marriage, in your marriage. It's shifting in your finances. It's shifting over your children. It's shifting your education is shifting, shifting, shifting by fire, by force. It is shifting, it is shifting. Ha, ha, ha. There's something God is doing in this moment. He's shifting the mindset of some individuals some people are in mental prison mental prison huh. stuck in their old ways and they can't break free but as we cry out as we raise a sound in this place the spirit of God will begin to hover over and move like a mighty rushing wind as you begin to open your mouth your mind will start to shift the reason why some people cannot see what's taking place in the realm of the spirit is because they're in heavy bondage and if your heart is not connected with God, everything that's taking place here today, you will wonder what is going on. But God has a way of moving. And you may not understand the move of God, but when God moves, something happens. Oh. Oh, yes. Ekoraba satayaba. Rokoshandayama. Every chain. Every wall we live to sound sound it's a konama it's breaking it's breaking it's breaking it's break we live to sound a konama say yes it is breaking it's breaking it's breaking yes it's breaking it's breaking oh your walls are coming down in the spirit oh your walls are coming down it's coming down it's coming down oh we live to sound oh 
the spirit of God is tearing down some stuff in your life they're coming off coming off he says he's moving in your life in this moment he's shifting some things in your mind and he's putting your mind on the right path for his glory men may look at the outward appearance but God sees the heart <laughs> So every situation that you are faced with, I command it in the name of Jesus Christ to shift. I see it. And it is shifting. 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 Yes. Shifting. It's shifting. shifting. Oh, yes, it is. Let your fire fall down. Let your glory rise up. Let your fire fall down. Let your glory rise. Let your fire. Yes, God. Let your glory. Can we sing that together? Say let. Let your fire Say let your glory. Say let your. Let your fire Let your glory. I want to say something to you, sir. Do not be afraid to speak what God gives you to speak. It may pierce the heart, but it is necessary for change. Oh. Some people may not understand what God is doing in you, but it is great. Worry not what men may say about you because you are called by God, not by men. Remember who you are and don't sway away from that. Walk in holiness consistently and let God lead you. Serve with a servant heart. And let the Lord lead. Amen. It is not of your own strength. Neither your own ability. But it is God that giveth strength and skills to do his work. But when you walk in obedience to your headship. The blessings flow from the head unto you. How you live your life outside here determines where you are going. But don't be afraid to speak, neither compromise the word of God. There are too many false people who are speaking but it's not directly coming from God. And they're speaking their own words. Consecration is key. It is important that you consecrate yourself. Serving God is not a game. It is a serious thing. 
And if you're not prepared for it, then you have to check yourself. Serving God is not a fairy tale because everybody else is doing it and the mainstream has this, this whole perception of church and it's gone too far from God. Mm. And God is not pleased with the way things are because men have created this system, created this church and it's not even of God. Yet they call on the name of Jesus but their heart is filthy and God can't work. And they're laying hands on people. Instead of people being free, they're being bound. My God, my God, my God. What kind of church is, is taking place? Let us be wise. Wise as the serpent, but harmless as a dove. The devil is seeking who he can devour. And he's coming for the church. He's coming to make a mockery out of the things of God. But when we walk in righteousness, in purity, then God will begin to put the devil's works to shame and expose the works of the devil that is taking place in the churches. It is time for us as people of God to take a stand for righteous living. We cannot expect to live anyhow and come in the house of God. God is looking for people that are going to till the ground, that are going to work for him, that are going to live right. God wants to use people that are going to bring people to him. It is time for us to evaluate what God really is to us. It doesn't make sense coming here and doing all of this if God is not present in our hearts. You can't fool God because God sees all things. You have to understand what's happening in the churches. It is serious and I believe it and I know God has sent me here for a reason to speak such word. So we as the children of God will wake up and take our rightful place as kingdom people and do what God has called us to do and lay aside our, our troubles and let God deal with them. For God is ready to help those that are serious about him. It is time for us now to look into ourselves in this moment. God, are you pleased with me? Are you pleased with the way I live day to day? Yes, I know I'm not perfect. We all make mistakes. But when it becomes a presumptuous thing, then that's a problem. Search your heart. Search your heart. Look inside yourself and say, God, I humbly come before you. And I repent of my ways. I don't want to miss what you're doing here today. So Lord, fix my heart and help me to walk upright. So that you, Lord, will be pleased with my life. It is important that we do what God requires us to do. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Come on, somebody, begin to praise him. You know what it is that you need from the Lord. You know yourself. And God is here right now to, to attend onto your needs. God is saying, look, I'm here already. I'm ready to move. But is your heart ready to receive me? I'm ready. Is your heart ready? To receive me. Here is the word of the Lord. Mm. Mm. Father God, forgive us of our ways. Cleanse our hearts. And have your way in us. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Can we just give him praise? <laughs> Yahweh. Rafa. 
Hello, Shine, Jesus you see the worship team brought us to a level tonight but can we take a moment to drop our markers in the spirit and give God a shout of praise because he's worthy to be praised come on open up your mouth revival hub huh? Give him what he's doing. Come on, give him what he's doing. I said, give him what he's doing. Shara Pade, Sikara Bakoya, Rapata Sakaya Bako, Sapara Kataya. Jesus, come on, open up your mouth. If he's worthy, if he's done anything for you. Would you give him praise? Will you give him adoration? Jesus. We bless the name of the Lord because he alone is good. Can we clap it up for Jesus in the house? Worship team, thank you. Jesus. My Lord. And we receive the word of the Lord in the land of the living. Everyone, welcome to Revival Hub. Can we make some noise for Jesus in the house? Because he is good and his mercy endures forever. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, God. We honor your presence tonight and we declare that you are good. I just want to um, say thank you to each and every one of you who are here tonight. Um, I don't take it lightly that you're here and I bless the name of the Lord for each and every one of you because you are here, hear what I'm saying, by divine appointment. Nobody in this room is here by accident. And God has something for each and every one of us tonight. Amen. So real quick, I just want to take a moment to honor my lovely team. Could we make some noise? Revival Hub team. Come on. The men and women of God who've sown, who've prayed, who've plowed through this vision and I just want to say, I say this to them privately all the time, but publicly I want to say thank you to each and every one of you who have stood beside me as we push forth this vision through. Amen? I just also want to take a moment to honor my leaders, my pastors, my apostles, Pastor Roy and Pastor Astrid Monsier. Can we make some noise for my pastors, for my apostles in the house, the ones who stand with us, pray with us, bless us in Jesus' name. And once again, thank you, each and every one of you, for coming tonight. Amen. Um, if you have anything, if you need anything throughout the course of tonight, um, we have a Revival Hub team. Make some noise once more time, Revival Hub team. So if you need anything throughout the course of the night, just reach out to one of them. They have name tags and they'll be happy to assist you. Amen. So how many of you guys are ready for the word? Y'all ain't ready. They ain't ready. Let's try it one more time. How many of you guys are ready for the word? Yeah. Hallelujah. 
and we thank God because he is good. So let's do something tonight. Let's pray. And you guys are going to pray first. Everybody repeat after me. Say, God, prepare my heart tonight to receive your word. I declare and decree that my heart is good ground to receive the word of the Lord tonight. I declare and decree that every enemy that will try to distract me, that will try to out, to pluck out the word will not prevail tonight. I speak faith tonight. I have a heart that is open tonight. Ready to receive what you have for me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, Father, I ask Holy Spirit, O oh God, that as I decrease, Father, I'm asking that you will increase. As I've done my part, I ask Holy Spirit that you partner with me tonight and do what only you can do. In Jesus' name we pray, and all God's people in this place agree with me by saying, Amen. Amen. Okay, so as you all know, the title of today's, um, the theme of tonight is Release the Roar. Everybody say, Release the Roar. Let's try it one more time. Everybody say, Release the Roar. Release the roar. You see, I believe that we are entering into this into a season that what the Lord will cause us as the people of God to enter into will be proclaimed everybody say proclaimed you see before we actually possess the promise of God God will cause us to proclaim it and I believe that as this is done a sound will be released that will produce a shift. Everybody say a shift. And I believe that a shift will happen in these three separate categories. Number one, a shift in our lives. What do I mean by that? A shift in the life of the believer. That means our character, um, our integrity, the way in which we live our lives. I believe that as we proclaim according to Christ, a shift will happen in our lives. Number two, I believe that a shift will also take place in our situations. What do I mean by that? The circumstances around us, the things that are taking place around us to our right and our left, I believe that the Lord will cause a shift to take place. And last but not least, I believe a shift will ultimately happen here in the earth. What do I mean by that? Heaven invading the earth. Now let's go through some definitions just real quick. The word proclaim means to declare something one considers important or with due emphasis. It means to declare officially or publicly to be. The word roar means a full, deep, prolonged cry. A move at high speed making a long, prolonged sound. And I believe this is twofold. I believe that God is going to cause us, what he's going to cause us to proclaim will be, number one, the promises of God concerning our lives. And number two, he will cause us to proclaim a shift of things into divine alignment. Everybody say divine alignment. You see, things that are currently out of place, I believe that he's going to bring those very things into divine alignment. So what do I mean by that? Hindrances, blockages, limitations, the things that are holding us back. I believe that the Lord is going to cause us to proclaim things into its rightful order and you see here I just want to sprinkle this in here real quick 
because I'm talking about proclaiming, declaring, and decreeing. And if I'm quite honest, I believe that this is where the new age people get it wrong. Because you see, they proclaim, they declare, and they decree. But they do it from the standpoint as if they are God. But they're not. You see, they're manifesting things and they're attracting things and they think that they're the pilot of their own life and therefore they're doing things and things are happening, but they're going through the back door to get it. And I just want to, um, to emphasize that that is not the pro proclamation and the declares and the decrees that I'm talking about. You see, the plot proclamations, the declares and decrees that I'm talking about is done by and through the power of Christ. You see, our authority and our power is given to us through Christ Jesus. You see, what we are entering into a season as the people of God where what we receive will have much to do with what we release. Amen? Let's open up the scriptures. Minia team, I appreciate you. If you would, can you put up Joshua chapter 6, verse 1 to 16. Amen. And it says this. Now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, see, I have given Jericho into your hands. It's kings and the mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city all you men of war, and you shall go all around the city once. This you shall do six days. And seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. But the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times. Everybody say seven times. And the priests shall blow the trumpets. It shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people shall shout with a great shout, then the wall of the city will fall down flat, and the people shall go up every man straight before him. Then Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priests and said to them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Ark of the Lord. And he said to the people, proceed and march around the city and let him who is armed advance before the Ark of the Lord. So it was when Joshua had spoken to the people and the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Lord advanced and blew the trumpet and the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord followed them. The armed men went before the priests who blew the trumpets and rear, guarded, rear guard came after the Ark while the priests continued blowing the trumpets. Now Joshua had commanded the people saying, you shall not shout or make any noise with your voice nor shall a word proceed out of your mouth until the day I say to you, shout. Then you shall shout. So he had the ark of the Lord circle the city going around it once. Then they came into the camp and lodged in the camp. And Joshua rose early in the morning and the priest took up the ark of the Lord the seven priests bearing seven trumpets of ram horns before the ark of the Lord went on continually and blew with the trumpets. And the armed men went before them. But the rear guard came after the ark of the Lord while the priests 
continued blowing the trumpets. And the second day, they marched around the city once and returned to the camp. So they did six days. But it came to pass. Everybody say, it came to pass. Everybody say, on the seventh day. That they rose early about the dawning of the day and marched around the city seven times in the same manner. On that day only, they marched around the city seven times. And the seventh time it happened. When the priests blew the trumpet that Joshua said to the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. Could we bless the name for the word of the Lord? Amen. Amen. So just a real quick recap. There was a man named Joshua. Everybody say Joshua. He was a man who was appointed and anointed by God to lead the people, the Israelites, into the promised land. And in this passage of scripture, God sent the children of Israel and commanded them to go in and conquer the land. You see, the, 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 the children of Israel's presence alone provoked warfare, or in other words, an attack. If we go back and we read verse 1, it says, Now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. And that tells me one thing, that the presence of the children of Israel literally provoked an attack. It provoked warfare. The word says that Jericho was shut up because of the children of Israel. And the attack was present not because of their weakness, but rather because of their strength. And for a moment, I started to ponder on that passage for a second. And I realized this thing, that in the midst of the storm, which was that the city was locked up, God announced the solution. You see, God said to go and march around the fortified wall one time for six days, and then on the seventh day, do it seven times, and the wall will come down. So to give a little bit of context of the wall of Jericho, Jericho was a big wall. Everybody say big wall. You see, this wall was about 15 feet high, and in width, it was about six feet. The wall, the width of the wall was six feet. So if we look at these walls today, they're not like we see these walls today. They were thick in width. And after doing more research, I realized that this wall sat on about six acres of land. So giving a little bit of context, what's interesting about this passage of scripture, from a human perspective, this task seemed not only hard, but pretty much impossible. But I love God's perspective in this matter. You see, in the midst of the current battle, the Lord spoke in past tense. He literally said to Joshua, he said, I have given Jericho into your hands. You see, God released a word of victory even before the manifestation in battle showed up. You see, up until this point in this passage of scripture, there was no evidence of victory. You see, a matter of fact, the current circumstances in the natural was giving defeat. You see, and I just want to encourage somebody tonight that doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what may be up against you. You see, God, we serve a God who will literally announce our solution and our success even in the midst of the storm. 
Why? Because we serve a God who makes all things possible. He makes the impossible things possible. And I just want to declare to everybody under the sound of my voice, I declare and decree that every situation that you may be going through tonight, I declare that God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob will announce the solution for your success in the presence of your enemies. I declare and decree that whatever has been tormenting you in this time and in this season, that God will torment the tormentors. Amen. Jesus. You see, if we're going to go through points, how do we actually release the roar? Here's my first point. Everybody say stand, stand. In, faith. in faith. That's my first point. You see, we must believe that despite the hindrances, we must believe that despite what is up against us, we will stand in faith in what God can do. You see, in this passage of scripture that we just read, it required great faith from Joshua. Because not only did he have to believe what God said, which was these walls, these fortified walls are going to come down. He also had the task to relay it to the people. He had to relay the vision and the instruction to the people of God. You see, as believers, we must stand in faith in the word of God. Whether that be a rhema word, which is... God's personal word for your now, or the graphe word, which is the written word of God. You see, are we willing to stand in faith even when our current situation is faulty? You see, the method of warfare that was given to Joshua and the Israelites made no sense in the natural. However, the very thing the very instruction that they were given caused them to win the war. You see, the Bible says that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. Hope is the desire for an expected outcome. Faith is the belief, it is believing something without the evidence of natural proof. You see, there was no natural proof that that wall was going to come down. But you see, faith fueled their response. Point number two, we must, as the people of God, war with the word. Everybody say war, war. with the word. You see, when God releases a word over us, we must war with that word. You see, some of us, what we do, God will come and speak a word to us. He will release the prophetic to us. And in that moment, we just receive, we believe, and then we stop. But you see, the Bible tells us, couldn't we put up 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 18, if you would? And it says this, this charge I command to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage the good warfare. You see, here's the thing about that. Here's the thing about the prophetic. You see, I find it very interesting that in this passage of scripture, Timothy was not given a suggestion. It says, this charge I commit to you. That is a command. He was given a command, which is an authoritative instruction to wage the good warfare concerning the prophecies that were given. And I will say this, it's great 
men and women of God, to receive the word of the Lord. You see, believing the word of the Lord is even better. But our belief must be backed with the blueprint which leads us to the fulfillment of the blessing. I'm going to say that again because I think some of you guys missed it. You see, when we receive the word of the Lord, we must back our belief with the blueprint. What is the blueprint? That is the instructions of the Lord, whether that be declaring and decreeing, whether that be praying the word through, whether that being following the instruction that is accompanied with that word. That is the only way that we will be able to see the fulfillment of the blessing concerning our lives. You see, we can't expect God to part the Red Seas and to break down the Jericho walls and to close the mouth of lions. But in that same breath, ignore his leadings and instructions. Can we put up Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3, if you would? And it says this, through faith... By faith, let me read this version. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were made of the things which are visible. And I guess my question for us tonight is what is framing our season? Is it the word of God or is it unbelief based on our current circumstances? Because warring with the word requires for us to confess it. It requires for us to declare it. It requires for us to decree it. It requires for us to speak the word. And all this is done in faith. Point number three is to trust God through the process. Can we put up Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 6, if you would? And it says this, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. Verse 6, In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. You see, when we translate the word trust, it literally means to lie helpless or or face down. It depicts a servant's heart waiting for the instruction and help of their master. You see, we must do this with all of our hearts. When we are going through a battle, when we are going through um, a trying time, we must trust God with all of our hearts. You see, will we have hope that God will come through for us? Even when our current circumstances are displaying hopelessness. You see, will we believe God at his word? Even when we're surrounded by blockages. You see, will we trust God even when we cannot trace him? You see, trusting God, what is it? It is practicing of the presence of God. You see, when we spend time with God, here's what happens. We begin to learn his nature. We begin to learn that he is indeed a God that can be trusted. You see, by studying and reading the word of God, we develop a track record with our heavenly father. You see, when we build history with God, It produces hope in us in what he can do for us. You see, here's the thing. The warfare strategy that was given to the people made no sense in the natural. But it required, everybody say required, total and complete dependency on God. Next point is work the word. You see, 
with the word and work the word are two different things. And I'm gonna break it down to you just real quick. As it relates to working the word, obedience, hear me, was the key factor in seeing victory. Here's the thing, God can announce victory over our lives all day long. But if we're not obediently following the instructions that God has given us, we won't go that far. Here's the thing about prophecy. Prophecy, what it is, it is the revealed mind, thoughts, plans concerning a person, people, group, nation, region, etc., etc. And understand this. Though a, the word was spoken, it required the Israelites to put in work. God said, Joshua, I have given Jericho into your hands. But here's the thing. God was not going to walk around the wall for them. They literally had to walk around the wall once a day for six days. And then on the seventh day, they had to do it seven times. So what am I trying to say? God may be announcing victory over our lives and over our situations, but we must do our part by following the instructions of the Lord. You see, perhaps in our own personal lives, could it be that even in the midst of the storm, God has been trying to announce victory. But if we fail to partner with him, if we fail to follow his instructions, we won't see the fullness of what he said. Can I give some practicals? You see, God can be speaking and saying, hey, I'm going to heal your body. Right? And you're like, God, you said you're going to heal my body. And God is saying, yes, but I also told you to start eating right. You guys not listening to me. <laughs> God may be saying, I'm going to cause you to go to the nations and you're going to preach with power. You're going to preach with grace. You're going to move in miracle signs and wonders. And God is like, yes, I did say that. But let's first start with a consistent study life. Because you can't preach what you don't know. You can't speak from a place if you don't have the experience of studying the word of God. You see, God may be saying, listen, uh, you may say, God, you said that you're going to give me millions. You said that my bank account is going to be fat. And God is saying, I did say that. But first, I'm calling you to steward well the money that is in your bank account. Hear what I'm trying to say. If we cannot steward the hundreds of dollars, if we can't steward the thousands of dollars, if everything that comes into our bank account, we spend it, how is God going to trust us with more? The Bible literally says, if we're faithful with the little, he will make us ruler over much. Amen. Some of you may be saying, God, you said, you said that you would deliver me from the spirit of lust. You said that you would deliver me from uh, watching pornography and masturbation and things of that nature. And God may be saying, listen. But I also told you to guard your eye gates. What you watch, the TV shows that you watch, the music that you listen to, the people you follow on Instagram. Hello, somebody. God may be saying, clean up your explore page in the name of Jesus. Because here's the thing, we cannot kill what we feed, people of God. We can't expect something to die if we're literally continuing to give nourishment to it. You see, God desires for each and every one of us to win in this season. The word says that many are the plans that I have towards you to give you hope and a prosperous future. 
And yes, God desires for all of us to win in this season. However, he also desires for us to put in the work. You see, our winning season is directly connected to the work we put in. You see, the Bible literally says that faith without works is what? It's dead. Because I believe I would be doing a disservice to us tonight if all I talked about was decreeing, proclaiming, but did not speak on the decision to remain disciplined. Because the thing is, God, we could shout all day long, and that's part of it, and we're going to do that tonight. But if that is not accompanied with discipline, if that is not accompanied with obedience, if that is not accompanied with following the instructions of the Lord, we're not doing much. Because here's the thing, distractions are a real thing. And I believe that it is tying up many believers in the realm of the spirit. So let's declare one thing by faith. Somebody declare, God, I will not only proclaim what you said, but I will also obey what you said. You see, we serve a supernatural God. So the super part, he does that stuff. All the supernatural stuff, he does that part. But it is our responsibility. Everybody say responsibility. As the believer to put the work in, in the natural. You see, God declared to Joshua and the children of Israel that I have given Jericho into your hands. But they still had to walk around the wall. You see, our promise of God is connected to our partnership with the Lord. Next point. Our release must be sanctified. Here's what I will say concerning that. We must understand as believers that what we release is always attached to a realm. Whether good or bad. You see, we must be mindful as the people of God of what we are declaring. Don't speak what you see if it doesn't align with what God said. I will declare what God said, point blank, period. You see, we also must be mindful as the people of God of what we are coming into agreement with. Because what we subscribe to has the power to impact our lives. And I just want to tell a real quick story time. Real quick. Um, there's this individual that I know, and she happens to be an atheist. And one day I seen her, she had like um, a hoodie on. And literally on the back of the hoodie, it literally said death. And I said, death? What you mean by that? So I went over to her and I said, hey, um, do you know your shirt says death on the back? And she's like, yeah, 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 I know. And I said, so what does it mean? And she said, it's a tarot card. And I said, okay, so what does that mean to you? And she said, well, it doesn't really mean much unless I let it mean much concerning me. And I said, Jesus. And I tell this story because when I look and observe this young lady's life, the amount of sickness that plagues her body the amount of mental torment that she experiences, the amount of pills that she must take on a daily basis is a direct contribution of what she's professing over her life. You see, 
as believers, we must be careful what we're speaking, what we're declaring, and what we're allowing to become who we are as people. I'm actually gonna just get the, um, the musicians to come back. And as it relates to release the roar, it is imperative that we must pay attention to not only what we release, but also what we receive. You see, it's not wise to receive every opportunity, every label, AKA horoscopes, come on somebody, AKA every word, AKA every label that society is trying to put on us. Because what, I, what I'm trying to say is these things, believe it or not, in the realm of the spirit, have lasting effects that, that can affect us as the people of God. You see, God desires for us um, to release a sound that is pure. He desires for us to release a sound that is holy. And I believe even tonight that he will cause us to release the sound of heaven that will shift things that are out of alignment into divine alignment. You see, all throughout scripture, we see that God, whenever he desired to do something in the earth, he spoke it and then he did it. Literally, God has given us, the believer, great dimensions of power and authority to the believer. You see, when we are truly submitted to Christ, he has given us access and power and dominion to move here in the earth. Jesus, could we put up, um, I believe it's Mark chapter something. There we go. Mark chapter 11, verse 23. So it says... For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, stop right there. Does it say whoever kicks? Does it say slap? Does it say wrestle? Does it say use worldly weapons? No. It says whoever says, in other words, whoever speaks to this mountain to be he removed and cast it into the sea. You see, we have the power as the people of God that whatever is holding us, whatever is blocking us, whatever is, 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 is stopping us from moving forward, God says he has given us the power to speak to the mountain and it will be he removed and cast it into the sea. Everybody stand to your feet if you would. There is power in our tongues. You see, God said, let there be light. So what did he do? He spoke it and there was. The very foundation of this world started with a spoken word. And that framed the very world we see today. And I believe that God wants us to release a sound tonight that will shift things that are out of alignment into divine alignment. Jesus. So here's what we're going to do tonight. If there are some walls in your life if there's some Jericho walls in your life that, you know, you, you're trying to move forward, two steps forward, three steps back. If there's some chains that are holding you tonight that you want to be broken by faith, I want you to come to the front. Because we're going to do a prophetic act and we're going to partner with heaven tonight together. So if you desire 
things to move in your life, I want you to come to the front. If there's things in your life that are holding you down, I want you to come to the front. If you're tired of seeing things not move for you, I want you to come to the front. If there's things that are holding you, I want you to come to the front. If you want to press into the place of prayer, I said I want you to come to the front. Because I believe that as we pray tonight, we're going to release a sound that will shift what is out of alignment into divine alignment. Amen? So God said, he wants us to release a sound. And I said, okay, God, how do you want us to do it? And he started to speak to me concerning the number seven. Everybody say seven. Seven means completion. If you can, can you put up the seven minute timer? But don't start it, please. Don't start it. Don't start it until I say go. Thank you. So the children of Israel and Joshua, they walked around the wall seven times, right? On the seventh day, they did it seven times. And after that, they released a sound. They released a shout that caused the Jericho walls to come down. Amen? So here's what we're going to do. Because the Lord said tonight, he said, have the minstrels lead you in this sound. So here's what we're going to do tonight. For the next seven minutes, we're going to have the minstrels play prophetically. And they're going to prophesy through the instruments. Yeah? Okay. And what are we going to do? We're going to be praying in the spirit for the next seven minutes. If you don't have your heavenly language, these are your three prayer points. Every say, everybody say point number one. You're going to ask God to give you eyes to see and ears to hear. Point number two, everybody say number two. We're going to ask God to increase our faith tonight. Because in order for the Jericho walls to fall, we got to believe it by faith. Amen? And point number three. Everybody say point number three. We're going to ask the Lord to break down the Jericho walls. So I'm going to say the points one more time. So number one, eyes to see, ears to hear. Point number two that God would increase your faith tonight. And point number three, that the Jericho walls will come down. Amen? Amen. And after when the seven minutes is over, we're going to release a sound from our bellies. Oh my God. I said we're going to release a sound from our belly. Here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing. You see, the Bible says that when Zion travails, she must bring forth. And I believe when we do this in unity, when we do this in one accord, that God will indeed break the Jericho walls. A sound will be a release in this region and in this, in this place that will shift things into divine order. Amen. Everybody understand your assignment tonight? Everybody understand your assignment tonight? So we're going to have the minstrels prophesy. And while they do so, I really want Abigail to lead this ship. I want her to lead this ship. And I want, her, I want us to play. I want you guys to play as if we're going into battle. And you guys are going to prophesy through the instruments. And we're going to pray for the next seven minutes in the name of Jesus. You guys ready? Revival Hub, you ready? Revival Hub, you ready? I said, Revival Hub, are you ready? I said, are you ready? Are you ready? Because it's going to come in. It's going to come in. It's going to come in. Come on, start the timer. Everybody begin to pray.
Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on. Push with everything you have. The last minute. The last minute. Here we go. Sapa. Come on. It's going to come. Bekataya Serekata Bakatoski and Amakaya Jesus. Oh, for the Spirit of the Lord says new dimensions. God says.
has new realms for you, daughter. And I don't even know what this means, but I hear the Lord say pockets of glory. For God says, indeed, you will be a glory carrier. And I literally see a vision. Oh, yes. And it's interesting because I see a ladder that is ascended to heaven. And usually people, they will walk up the ladder. But I literally see you running at full force. And God says, because of your desire to please me with the entirety of your heart, God says that even your spiritual growth, he will cause it to accelerate at an accelerated rate. So, Father, Jesus, Herdebekoya, Zerakapakatoski, Dabakaya, Roko Tepeko, the wind of the Spirit, Tanta, Sekarakatoya. Zikarabakataya. The Lord says, Glory, Rarako, Sikantaya, Rikataya, Rakatabakataya. I'm preparing you to carry my glory. Shokorebekataya. And the Lord says that it's going to come with a cost. Rakapakatoya, Rakatapako. But the Lord says, You're built for this, daughter. Oh. He's placed a sword in your mouth. Jesus. So Father, even now, this new dimension of glory, I feel it. This new dimension of levels, yeah. This new dimension that you have for your daughter, God. Sebeko. Father, we release it now in the name of Jesus. Rakatapako. Sikataya. Rapakatoya. May the fire of God consume her now in the name of Jesus. Rakapa. Rakapakoya. Raka. Sipakoya. Sintabakaya. Come on, I wish you would pray. I wish you would push. I wish you would push for what the Lord is doing in our midst. Come on, begin to pray. you're doing in this time and in this season oh sarakapakatoski adabakataya natalie lift your hands please shorakatapakoya zindabakonda bakatoski adabakataya the lord says that he sees your heart And you've seen the sacrifices that you have made for him. And the Lord wants you to know tonight. He says, daughter, I'm so pleased with you. The apple of his eye, my God. And the Lord says that he desires to do great and mighty things in and through you. I don't even know what this is, but I see like, I see there's something in your hands and it's almost like the Lord, I don't know if you have a business or uh, what it is, but I see business in your hands. Father, the heavenly keys that she needs to excel in this new season, God. Father, may you release it to her now in the name of Jesus. And I declare and decree, God, that every limitation that is holding her back, oh God, from moving forward into the fullness, everybody say fullness, 
of what you have for her comes down tonight. Come on. I said it comes down tonight. Come on, pray with her. I said it comes down tonight. In the name of Jesus. Rakata. Rakapoko. Sikarako. Sapakaya. Rakatoya. Yes, Lord. May you do a new thing in us tonight. Come on, continue to pray. I said continue to pray. I said continue to pray. The spirit of the Lord is in our midst. And if you would just engage with heaven, if you would just engage with the angels, I promise you the Lord will show up for you tonight. Sapakaya. Rakapakatoskiya Bring me down just a little bit. Bring me down just a little bit. Alisa, would you come, sweetheart? Would you come? Saraba katoski anamakaya. Ziraka rebekoti anamakataya. Just stand right here, sweetheart. Yes, Lord. For the Spirit of the Lord says to you, daughter, it's almost like I see weights, 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 weights in your hands. And the Lord says, as you lay it down, and surrender everything. Everybody say everything. The Lord says, I will work with you and watch how I shift your life. God says, he's not looking for you to be perfect. But the Lord says, as you surrender everything, he's asking though for your progression. The Lord says, as you take baby steps with me, says your God, I will do a transformative work in your life and in your heart. The Lord says you have a decision to make. The Lord says, would you give me everything and try it completely my way and watch what I do in and through you? says the spirit of the living God. So Father, even now, I thank you for her life and I thank you for her heart, Jesus. As she lays down every burden and as she surrenders everything at your feet, God, Father, I declare and decree, O oh God, that you will move mightily for this one in the name of Jesus. And, oh yes, and the Spirit of the Lord says, even the places in your life that 
the enemy desire to destroy you, God says that he will turn it around for his glory. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And the Lord says even your testimony, the testimony that he's developing, developing on the inside of you, God says that it will change lives. Yeah, it will change lives. So Father, even now, God, may you give our hunger and a zeal for you, God, in this season, oh God. May every distraction, everything that is trying to lure her in another direction, in another way, in another um, uh, uh, path, God, we cut that off now in the name of Jesus. And I declare and decree, oh God, that she is marked for the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus. And Father, may you do it for her. May you meet every one of her needs. And we declare it to be so now in the name of Jesus. Every chain must break and fall tonight in the name of Jesus. Saba rakaya, soto da rakaya, rokoto, sika rabakaya, rakapakatoski rabakataya, sika baka, rakapakoya. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, 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 God, we bless your name tonight. Jesus, Jesus. Mm. Yes, Lord. Mm. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jonathan. I hear the spirit of the Lord even say concerning you, sir. The Lord says that he loves you with an everlasting love. And the Lord says that you have a heart as one as that of David. And the Lord says to you tonight to not allow people to box you in into one sector. For there is multiple graces on your life. And what God is calling you to do, you see, some may not see it, some may not perceive it right now, but the Lord says, don't allow them to box you in. You know what God has called you to do. You know the places and what he has shown you of where he's going to take you. And the Lord says, rest in that. So rapakataya. Zika Rabakatoski Anamakataya. Mm. My God, my God, my God. Jesus. And even the situations that have transpired, even within your family unit, the Lord says there are things that you, you haven't necessarily understood, but you have trusted Him. And because of that, the Lord says that He's going to produce a testimony for your family. Everybody stretch your hands towards Jonathan for a second. We're going to pray. Listen, we pray and we cover one another here at the hub. So would you pray for the man of God? Lord, I cover his household under the name of Jesus. Come on, pray. In the name of Jesus. I declare that every enemy that is working against this family, oh God, I break it by fire in the name of Jesus. May the healing bomb of Gideon Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Rabakataya, Sikataya.
Every promise that you have for his household, him and his household, we declare that it is sealed in the heavens now. Oh, Sabakataya. May the fire of God consume every enemy that is working against him and his household. Pray! Sabakataya. Rapakatoskia. We push for their destinies. We push for their lives. In the name of Jesus. By fire and by force. Right now. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus, may the blessings of Abraham be upon him and his household. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, yes. We declare it to be so in Jesus name we pray amen could we clap it up for what God did tonight come on revival hub could we open up our mouths for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords for what he has done in our midst tonight for indeed a sound was released that shifted things into alignment for indeed a sound was released that down Jericho walls in the name of Jesus and I'm done but can we lift up one more shout of praise from the depths of our belly for what the Lord did and what he's gonna do in our lives are you ready are you ready three two one shout for what you have done tonight God and we bless you Lord because you are good amen amen can we clap it up one more time for Jesus in the house can we lift up a shout of praise if you were blessed tonight how many of you guys were blessed tonight make some noise for Jesus he gets all the praise. He gets all the glory. He gets all the adoration. Hallelujah. We bless your name, oh God. We lift you up higher, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Um, we're just going to call Ashley up to do announcements in one second. But before I do that, um, I just want to give an opportunity tonight for salvation. See, if you're here tonight, yes, you guys can have your seats, actually. If you're here tonight and you don't know Christ, or if you've known him at one point, but for some reason you kind of lost your way, I'm not going to call you to the front, but I just want you to slip up your hand just real quick. Amen. Everybody's saved in the house. But let's, we're going to still pray uh, for those watching online. If that is you, just put, it's me in the comments. And we're going to pray as a body of believers for those who may watch this and be in need of salvation. Amen. So let's repeat after me. Say, God, I admit that I'm a sinner and in need of your grace. I ask you to come into my heart and life. Cleanse me of all unrighteousness. I believe that you lived. I believe that you died. And I believe that you rose again on the third day. 
Lord, I desire for you to not only be Savior, but also Lord. So come into my life. Change me. Shape me. Transform me. I'm yours. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can we clap it up one more time as Ashley comes? Good evening, everyone. Can we give a clap for Jesus? Woo! What a night. What a night. Amen. I just have a couple of announcements to make today. Um, I believe that everyone was blessed. And we don't want to leave you guys. We want to stay connected with everyone in the room. Um, so we have a few of announcements. Um, we are on Instagram, guys. We're on Instagram. <laughs> you can follow us at We Are Revival Hub. Um, you can follow us. Send in any prayer requests that you may have. Just send us a DM and we can pray for you. Don't be shy. Um, collectively, as a team, we're going to um, just plead the blood of Jesus over you and, and pray for any requests that you have, okay? Um, in addition to that, we also have a website. Get out, right? <laughs> <laughs> we are revivalhub.com. Now, this is really important. I want you to listen up because on the website, if you just got saved tonight and you want to know, okay, what's next? What do I do? There's actually a couple videos on the website that kind of just guides you through your journey, uh, your new step with Christ. So feel free to jump on the website. Um, there's about three or four videos just explaining you the journey that you've now taken to walk with Jesus Christ. Okay. Um, other than that, I think that's it for announcements. Yes. And then we're going to take up offerings. So I'm going to hand it over to my pastor, Pastor Roy. Hallelujah. What a powerful night. What a powerful night. Now we get to sow. And you know what? The, these, thank you. These are the environments that you want to sow in when the Spirit of the Lord is moving. And I'm thinking of Isaac when he went into the land and it says he redug re the wells of his father Abraham. And he got the, that life-giving flow going again. Very, very critical. And it says in that same land where he redug those wells, that it, the, the Bible tells us that Isaac sowed in that land, that same place, and that in the same year he received a, a, a harvest a hundredfold. So it's during these times when we, the Spirit of God is moving and that we sow into it that we're sowing into something that's going to produce a lot of fruit. Amen? It's going to produce a lot of fruit. So we want to sow into Revival Hub tonight. And there's a couple of ways that you can do it. Uh, if you like to give through your phone, uh, you can send an e-transfer to office at gladtidingstabernacle.com and just put in, in the message section on your e-transfer, just write, type in Revival Hub, okay? And then that will go, that'll be set aside for, for the Revival Hub ministry. Uh, we do have envelopes in the back of your seat. So if you'd like to take a moment just to uh, fill out one of those envelopes, uh, just write on the envelope, uh, Revival Hub. Okay, so, that, so we know where uh, the offering is, is going to be put towards. Uh, because there's going to be more of these. There's going to be more of these meetings. And so we want to sow into it uh, for those future meetings, okay? So is everyone ready to sow tonight? Is that every, how about this side? Is everyone ready to sow tonight? Amen. Okay. So if you have your offering, if you give electronically, just raise your phone. If you have your offering, just raise it before the Lord. Father, we want to say thank you. We worship you and we honor you and we bless you. And Father, as we come to sow, and as we come to sow into the flow, we're thanking you, oh God.
for an abundant harvest and an abundance of fruit. So Lord, we give you all the honor and the glory. We bless you and we thank you.